Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with part two of my Q&A. Um, you're gonna have to excuse the special guest because she is due a feed probably in like 20 minutes. So I might just film 10 minutes, quickly go and grab a feed and then finish. We're just gonna sort of have to see how little Miss Fussy Pants goes. She's starting to gum her hand, so have to bear with. You also have to bear with the with the lighting. I'm actually filming this at four o'clock, um, which I never normally do. I try and get it done at like lunchtime, so the sun is like blaring into my face, hence why I've had to lower my blind. Um, but we've just got back off our walk. P is chilling out. She's really tired and just oversensitive today. So I was like, go on the iPad. You can do you. I'm gonna cook dinner. So dinner's now in gonna do Florence her bottle. I'm looking very brown. I have been tanning. I say tanning. I've been in the garden a lot this week. Um, pretty, pretty impressive my tan. Looks quite good. Well, it's not so great there, but then when you actually look this way, I look quite brown like I've been in Spain, but Costa del Norwich is the location of my holiday currently. So I've still got my list of questions. So I thought I would just sit down and answer them. Hey Florence. Can you say good afternoon? Hiya! <gasps> Boo! What's going on? <gasps> Can you see yourself? You're so grown up now. Good girl. Right, so first question is how are we finding lockdown life? Currently when filming, today's the 1st of June so a lot of schools went back um, and you would have seen my first part of the Q&A um, prior to this one. So it's the 1st of June, Peace School isn't back yet, she hasn't got her start date yet, the school is potentially opening on the 8th, so next week, um, but it's not confirmed, <laughs> it's not confirmed yet, we're sort of waiting for finalised places um, and like the situation update and stuff. So I feel quite comfortable that P's school hasn't gone back this week, it's nice to know that other children are going through it first and if the school system that people have in place hasn't worked, then hopefully our school can adapt to that before we go back. Having said that, lockdown life for us, it's been all right to be fair. I remember in March, just after I had Florence, so Florence was born on the 19th of March. Um, do you mind kicking me with your clammy feet? Um, I remember thinking to myself, holy shit, I'm gonna be at home on my own for God knows how many weeks or months with a newborn and a four and a half year old. How the fuck am I gonna cope? And I was absolutely terrified. You would have seen my like first week with Florence video. I handled it really well looking back on it. Like I was so overwhelmed and I didn't know what to do. But the only thing you can do, and this is just my mentality, is you just got to crack on and you just got to deal with it. Because if I was a heap on the floor with stress and anxiety and God knows what else, I'm no good to my children. So I just got on with it. Um, you, you didn't have a choice. Um, I have found it okay. Like, I remember this time last year thinking, oh my God, I've got to deal with the six week holidays. Like, how am I going to cope with that? Um, six week holidays this time is going to be an absolute breeze because I've done like 10, 11 weeks pretty much on my own, like everyone else has. Um, I struggled looking at Instagram, seeing that the majority of people that I follow um, had their husbands or partners at home for support and I think having Neil at home would have been a lot easier. Um, but I'm thankful that Neil has got his job, he's a full time like key worker and we're we're grateful that he hasn't lost his job or anything like that like he's needed in his trade um so it swings and roundabouts but actual lockdown life is okay it's like groundhog day and i have my low days last saturday i had a really low day and called ellie and sort of had a a little moan to her and things like that um what was i saying i just got interrupted um yeah, so I had a, a little like lull like you do and I have actually taken to like writing a journal because I feel like that's really helped and I want to sort of remember this time even though it's been pretty mundane and a bit boring and crap but I wanted to like document my thoughts and my feelings and stuff so I've started journaling. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. 
uh, I've spent a lot of time outside. I couldn't imagine doing this not having our garden. I also couldn't imagine doing this in the winter. That's one thing that terrifies me is that we might potentially be getting a second wave when it's a lot colder and we will be literally confined into the house. I found that going on our daily walks is really beneficial. Like previously, before this whole situation, I would, if we had like a couple of home days, I just wouldn't get dressed, I wouldn't go out. And I found that getting dressed and making that one hour walk a day, like maximized it, I really needed that. And so has so have the children. Um, so yeah, it just sort of, you make it work. I've spent, or P has spent a lot of time on her iPad. Uh, we've done no homeschooling apart from learning the letter of the week and like the craft activities that they give us on tapestry But that's okay. Like I feel happy. I I've survived it and that's as good as it's gonna get um, But yeah, it hasn't been as hard as I thought it would be um, And then another question about lockdown is what is our lockdown daily routine? so all depends on feeds and P and Florence so Neil wakes up between like half, well it depends on where his first job is, he'll wake up at like quarter past six, half past six, quarter to seven, it varies. He will then get up with um, P, P normally wakes up about that time and he like potters around the house, gets himself ready and things like that. I might be in bed doing a feed with Florence or I might be just sort of resting because she normally feeds. She'll either do a feed at like half one, two and then one at six or she'll do one at like four in the morning um for like between four and five and then she then won't have one until about seven so it all depends on that but either i'll be like dozing or i'll be feeding with florence and then when neil leaves i get up um i do breakfast and just crack on with the day uh when i have my breakfast uh, P either goes on her iPad or she plays with her Sylvanians. So that's something she's really gotten into at the moment. Or she just keeps herself busy whilst I'm obviously sorting Florence out and sorting myself out. Um, I normally get us dressed. I like Florence gets dressed pretty much straight away. When I change her bedtime nappy, I then get her dressed. Once P's had her breakfast um, and she's had her time, I like to get her sorted before I then sit, like sort myself out, like with food and stuff. Um, so she's normally dressed by like 9, 10, depends on, again on the routine of the day, how everything falls into place. I then like to be out in the garden by like half 10 if we can and then we spend like the morning in the garden um, and then we have lunch between 12 and 1.30 again dependent on feeds and stuff. I crack on and just pot around doing housework. Um, spend like time in the garden again with P on her trampoline or we've been playing rounders that's been quite fun uh, again I say these things they don't last a long period of time like we'll play rounders for like 20 minutes and then it's mum I'm bored I want to do something else mum I'm bored of bubbles I want to do something else it's non-stop uh, it really is draining um, feeds keeping my child entertained keeping her fed keeping her happy about three we normally go for our walk I tend to go for the walk in the afternoon I don't really know why um, and then once we've had our walk for example now um, we'll either do like a craft or people will go off and do our own thing watch we sometimes watch um, like Disney Plus or Netflix and do like a puzzle or something and then I will do dinner a feed and then hopefully Neil will come home and then we just sort of do our normal routine of bath or dinner bath bed uh, and then Florence stays up with us until about, she has a feed at seven, then she has a feed at nine. And um, that's like a mini cluster feed, so then get her to go through until like one or three in the morning, all depending on her. And that is our day. So when Neil, or when the children, or when P is in bed, sorry, uh, we then sit down and watch some telly. And that's pretty much our day done. Try and fit in a little bit of Animal Crossing if I can in the evening or something that I'm doing like my journaling or something and that is it so <laughs> it's nothing to write home about and that's one reason why I haven't vlogged because I don't want to vlog I'm bored of watching people's lockdown videos I know it might help some people and it might make you feel like you're in the same boat but we're all doing the same thing I don't need to see people doing their washing and washing up and taking their dog for a walk it doesn't interest me so that's why I haven't filmed um what else have I got 
there you go another lockdown question is any new hobbies that you've oh, that you've done during lockdown so like i said journaling i used to do a journal um i've done diaries throughout my life uh, but i journaled properly when i was 17 18 it was when i came home from the states and I, I remember journaling when I met Neil. So I've got some I've got some interesting memories up in my attic in my journal about like pre Neil and like dates and stuff. And when I spoke to Ellie, she was like, "Why don't you start your journal again?" And I was like, "Yeah, like I will. Like it's I think it's really important to like write down your feelings and reflect. Like sometimes you can't really vocalise what you want to say. Or you can't remember what you want to say to people. Uh, and I think in ten years time, when I look back and I think Jesus, like." you went through that and you did it like good on you so i've been taking up journaling don't get me wrong it takes me about three days to like do one entry because life evolves around the children and i don't have much spare time at the moment um other than that that's the only new one obviously oh i say animal crossing playing my switch that's the new one because i didn't have that uh, i'm going to talk about that in a like a recent favorites video i don't know when that's going to go up i haven't even filmed that yet um, but I was very lucky to buy myself a switch during lockdown. Um, I had uh, £100 left over from my Christmas money and at the time Tesco had an offer on where it was a switch and Animal Crossing for uh, £200 so it technically only cost me £100 um, and I wanted to treat myself because I wanted like a little bit of an escape and playing Animal Crossing is that. If you don't know what it is you probably won't get it but I love it so much and I'm going to talk about it in more in depth in a recent video um so i've been playing that but having said that alongside everything else i just don't have the time to put into it as much as i would love um obviously i've been reading i've been trying to do a puzzle as and when i can i try and fit in my stuff like me time stuff within like a 20 to 30 minute time frame it's not long at all doing my gel nails i've been enjoying doing that um but obviously I come last <laughs> in the tier. I know I should try and make more time. I just would rather have a clean and tidy home because I cannot stand having a messy home. And I would go insane if my home wasn't clean. So I've got the children as a priority, then the home, then Neil, then the cat, then myself. <laughs> uh, but I do try and make time for me, maybe like an hour tops a day which is not a lot of time at all has it been having a baby in lockdown um this is quite a good question i i don't really know i, I think it's been quite good for me um i wanted that space anyway i remember i've said it previously when i had Pete, i felt very very bombarded by family members and i felt like i had to share her very early on when i wasn't ready to do that um, whereas this time because of lockdown everyone has had to stay away <laughs> and um, I don't want to sound like an asshole when I say it's been quite nice but it has been quite nice not giving Florence around like a parcel parcel um, I have savoured it more and it's been really nice to be in our bubble obviously I'm so aware that things are different from having a child already um, just like the routine appointments hasn't happened and like just little things like not being able to register her birth and things like that I know it doesn't matter and it will happen in the grand scheme of things um, I'm just aware that it's different but actually having her during this time it's given me not not that I wasn't focused already but it's given me like another new focus um, it's I don't know I don't know any different so I can't really say what, how I would be if it wasn't during lockdown it's a lot less stressful in lockdown you're not rushing around going here there and everywhere I haven't had to worry about getting ready for school albeit it was only two and a half days a week I haven't had to worry about seeing this friend this day and this friend the other day and then this family member in the afternoon and then trying to busy up our weekends it's been really nice because we've all had to strip back and we've all had to take the slower pace of life and that's one thing that I really want to continue um, as currently recording we are now allowed to have up to six people like in a back garden yesterday we had Neil's mum so my mother-in-law and uh, in the morning and then we had Neil's dad come over so my father-in-law in the evening and that was too much for me 
I had gone 10 weeks. Obviously, they didn't hold Florence or anything like that or pee. And we obviously stuck with the distancing in the garden. But we have gone 10 weeks not seeing anyone. And then in one day, I saw two different members. And that was too much. And I'm worried that we're all very quickly going to revert back to our old ways. And that's one thing that I don't want to do. When we have a weekend off together with Neil, because he sometimes works weekends. And when I'm back at work, I work weekends. I don't want to fill my weekends and cram everything in because I feel like I have to. I used to feel really guilty that we weren't doing enough when actually we were doing too much. Like I'd go to a soft play in the morning and then I'd go to the park in the afternoon and then I'd go and see someone. It's like, what's the point? We've got a perfectly lovely home. We've got things to do in the house. Let's enjoy us. Um, so I've enjoyed having a baby in lockdown. Um, it's like I said you just appreciate what you've got more and I, I don't I wouldn't have changed it I wish that we could have seen friends and family a lot sooner um but then having said that it's been nice just to be us you want to feed I'm going to quickly pause this uh check on my dinner let's lie you down you're going to cry and I'll be back <laughs> with a bottle is that better yes anyway so i've got a couple of questions on birth first one is was birth quick a second time and then second was how did did the birth of florence go how i wanted so birth second time was a lot faster you would have seen my labor and delivery story if you couldn't be bothered to sit through an hour which i don't blame you my first contraction at around 5 30 and florence was born at 19:44. so i my labor start to finish was two hours which is crazy. It was very quick. Um, I had false labour the day before and I felt really stupid because I got to hospital and my contractions stopped. And uh, <laughs> I was always really aware that I was gonna labour really quickly second time, which is what they said. And I was so worried about that. That's why I went to hospital. So then the fact that it stopped, I was like, oh, I'm so melodramatic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the next day it, was it no it wasn't the next um, it was the day after i went in on this i want to say i went in on this no it was the morning of the 18th so yeah the next day the 19th when she was born um i had a sweep at nine nothing no signs had like cramps and period pains and like i had my show didn't think anything of it and then my contractions came from nowhere and i was it was just so quick but Speaking of did it go how I wanted to, the actual birth itself was perfect. I wish we had things in place. We generally didn't think it was going to happen. So Ellie was my childcare and she was working. It was the first day she went back to work, typically. Um, so the stress of like getting childcare for her was, was not ideal. Uh, and nothing was really put into place because it was the day previous. But it was what it was. We managed to get through it and... Yeah, it was perfect. I would recommend a water birth to anyone. I loved it so much. And yeah, it was incredible. My midwife was amazing. And yeah, I loved it. I, I, I'm happy that my last baby had such a... I didn't even have a bad experience with pee. But I'm happy that my last birth with... Flo, like my last birth and stuff, obviously with Florence. Because um, I'm not going to go through it again. I'm happy with how it, how it went. I know a lot of people can have really horrific births and quite traumatic and things like that and I'm, I'm very very lucky um so yeah I'm very happy as to how it went were my fears of having another baby necessary not at all um I was very in my head again when I was pregnant with Florence and I think that comes across in my videos quite evidently that I I was very uptight and very stressed and I thought I knew what to expect when actually I didn't at all just because um, I struggled first time with pee didn't mean I was going to struggle this time but I thought that I would um, I think that just comes with experience and again babies are all different not that pee was a difficult baby um, but lack of experience and not really knowing what I was doing and being afraid um, definitely sort of hindered me first time whereas with Florence like I just I know it um so I wish I could go back and tell myself when I fell pregnant and like watching my my like pregnancy videos 
I wish I could talk to myself and be like, just chill out. You're gonna give birth during a pandemic and the world is gonna go to shit, but you and your little unit are gonna be absolutely fine. Um, I feel like I needed like a good shake to be like, get out of your head and just chill and everything will be okay. Um, because it is okay and I cannot imagine life with just one child now, like it, Florence is here for good and I couldn't imagine not having her here. Was going from one to two how I thought it would be and is it going easy, is it easier going from one to two than it is not to one? A hundred percent is easier. I remember like listening to this question multiple times, like I was really keen to know what it was like going from one to two as opposed to not to one. Um, and again, not to one is completely different because you have nothing in place, you have no experience really, um, your life massively shifts, whereas one to two, you're already a parent and you already know the ropes, you know how things go, you know how children work, per se, <clears throat> and yeah, it's nowhere near as bad and I, again, I wish I could tell myself that. Um, going from not having children to having one, like I said, completely rocks your world. Whether you love it with all of your being, not that I did, I really struggled. Because you go from being carefree, not having really any ties apart from obviously like bills and like a house and stuff. All of that changes and I think, especially with me, this is what I've been talking to earlier about is that I have been so uptight, I've put a massive restriction on, I say us, mainly me. Um, like, seven o'clock is bedtime, P has to be in bed at seven o'clock. Whereas, I should be a little bit more lax and think, it's the weekend or she doesn't have school today. Um, she can stay up to like half past seven, quarter to eight, we can watch a film together. Um, I was very, very uptight. And even like when P was small, I was very uptight and I think I made it a lot harder on myself. Um, I don't think it was easy being the first of all my friends to have a child either. I really struggled to have people to speak to or to bond with because none of my friends had children until like eight months down the line and then like a year. It was very hard to find someone um, that could relate. So in that aspect, it's just... Nothing can prepare you going from none to one at all. You can read all the books, you can watch all the vlogs, and trust me, I did, and nothing could prepare you for it. Um, your relationship changes, your priorities change in a heartbeat, and it's overwhelming, and it was overwhelming for months for me. Whereas going from one to two, like I said, you have a family life, you are living it, and number two just slots in, and I know it sounds horrible, and I remember like watching videos thinking, that sounds really horrible, like baby two just, fits into your life but they do because they have to you still have another older child to look after as well as everything else that you've got juggling and going on in your life so number two literally does just fit in around you and I, like, I remember when I had P I wouldn't hoover because I didn't want to wake her up whereas with Florence I'm like right I've got a hoover <laughs> deal with it and she has, is a really good sleeper and noise and stuff like she doesn't really stir for anything um, so I'm quite lucky in that aspect, so yeah, one to two is a lot easier than I thought and it's a lot more enjoyable as well. Um, I had a question about my SPD, wondering whether that stopped as soon as I gave birth. That did stop as soon as I gave birth, um, however if I go for a long walk, um, as in maybe like 45 minutes plus, I do get the, po the pain in my pubic bone again. I know that that is quite common um, and hopefully that should go. Uh, I try not to push myself too much, like if I'm wearing Florence in her baby carrier then I try not to walk long distance and I'll, I'd rather have her in her push chair just so I don't have the extra weight. Um, but yeah, the, the pain did pretty go like pretty instantly. Um, I've just got to be careful, obviously, like walking long, long distance. Uh, question about Neil is how is he coping with the change? I can't fault Neil, he is such an amazing father and partner, husband, um, he has adapted so well. It's tough, of course it is, it's hard for him, it's hard for me, um, and I miss being able to have that time with just him, but 
he's taken to Florence so well. He's got that bond. Yeah. She absolutely loves him. Like whenever he walks into the room, um, she smiles from ear to ear and I can tell that she's going to be a daddy girl just like P because they all love Neil and I get the grief. Um, but yeah, she, he has done so well and I don't mean that in a patronising way. We all have our moments and it's stressful when he comes home and P's in like a really ratty mood and he wants to sort of see Florence but then P gets a little bit jealous. Um, but I mean that's part and parcel of just having children anyway. What's our next goal as a family? Moving house, holiday once this was all over or maybe another baby. Definitely not another baby. Um, I don't really know. We're not going to move house. I'd like to potentially buy this house in the next god knows how long. Whenever our landlord is ready to sell I would like to buy this house. Um, I don't know whether we're ever going to be able to afford a deposit or anything like that but that's a different different topic altogether um i'd love to buy this house and renovate it and turn it into a three bed we've spoken about it a lot during lockdown um like ex doing an extension going up into the attic obviously this all costs money and we have no savings um that is one thing that we really want to do but again it's not even for sale so that's not going to happen a holiday we don't go abroad at the moment i don't want to go abroad when i've got two small children <coughs> just um if that's just a personal thing i would much rather go abroad um when the children are older so when he's probably like eight and florence is four which makes me feel ill because she's currently like at two months old um and yeah i haven't been abroad since 2015 because obviously i had pee there we go oh excuse you um so yeah holiday abroad won't be a thing potentially in the uk but again we're just sort of going to play it by ear with everything that's going on i'm going to write this holiday this summer holidays off um because i don't feel like it's essential to travel somewhere even if we are allowed and everything's okay i don't want to um so i'd like to do like a lot of like little trips around like north norfolk and stuff um, like day trips and stuff another thing that i will probably speak about and I, I can't remember if i spoke about it in the first video or not is one thing that i want to get done is a breast reduction for myself obviously um i don't know whether i will be able to get that on the nhs or not i would like to think that i would be fortunate to but again <clears throat> hang on let me have a quick drink with everything that's going on with the economy and the corona And everything in between i'm not going to get my hopes up so i'm going to need to save probably like at least seven grand which is a start of a deposit of the house so it's very difficult to weigh up what i would eventually do breast reduction for my health or a house for our family it's very difficult um but potentially buying this house and getting a breast reduction are my next goals um for us i am gonna end the video off here because my dinner is cooking and i need to sort it out i feel like i've been waffling for long enough i really hope you enjoyed these past q and a's that i have done for you if you have any um suggestions for me as to things you'd like me to do please let me know um it's really hard to try and juggle everything at the moment and get things up for you and edited and trying to reply to all the comments like i always do but I will get there eventually. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you're all staying sane and safe. And we will see you all very, very soon.